Game three back at Boston Garden. Celtics 116, Warriors 100. A physical affair. The Boston Celtics impressing their will on the Warriors. It was not, as you would expect, without some controversy. Draymond Green, notably, involved in numerous dust-ups after the game when asked about the crowd chanting, fuck you, Draymond. Numerous Warriors, including Steve Kerr, Clay Thompson, they worried about the children. Because the greatest. Welcome all caps. <laughs> Celtics won. Here's Clay Thompson on the crowd. We played in front of rude people before, dropping f bombs with children in the crowd. The, these scallywags in Boston. These leathery folk with their coarse ways. Rudest thing ever said in that stadium. Nothing worse. Than I thought you were. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I thought you were a sailor. I thought you were a ship's captain. All of a sudden, you've not heard some things before. Now I should say that Boston crowds have fairly been criticized for stepping over the line. There's no indication that that happened tonight. There's no indication that anything beyond the stuff that happens in sports happened in the crowd. It was a lot of fuck yous. Like what happens when you go to Warrior? games are they just like drinking with their pinky out and being oh, fantastic game over here today jason tatum's playing quite well i, I wish he'd stop passing the ball uh marcus smart stop that you how terrible of you sir don't do that in a basketball <laughs> match of this magnitude sir how dare you on the on the crowd's uh, response to draymond uh classy very classy what are we what are we watching like swan lake like what is the <laughs> I really don't understand, like, I get Draymond is a super important player to the Warriors. He will have his number retired. He's a legend there. He's probably the greatest, and I don't say role player in a bad way. I say, like, he's the, one of the greatest, most legendary role players of all time in terms of, like, what he does for that team. But, like, you have to know the fans of 29 other teams do not fuck with him at all. Like, in fact, he's just one of those guys where he plays for the other team, and you're annoyed by him, and like a Lambeer, you love it when he fails, and you cuss him out. Isn't that what happens? And then Draymond Draymond immediately said the shit word in front of his kid. That was, so. well, but that, I agree, is funny. But also, that's his child, he can do that. How do you feel you played? You like know. shit. What was the difference this game? <laughs> The way his son like looks at him. Now, as we all know, cursing at opposing players only happens in Boston, literally nowhere else in the entire league. Hey, watch your mouth, woman! People's feelings get hurt, even if they're called a bad word. Um I guess his feelings just got hurt. Well, I think that that is actually a great way to sum it up. The Warriors lost. They tried to win. They got finally a good game out of Clay. Steph played well, killing him in the pick and roll. And they got ran. And they're mad about it because they realize it's going to be real tough to get that next title. And in fact, maybe they're not going to get it because the team on the other side is like really big, really good, and younger. Like, no bullshit is a lot younger. And they're just doing the basketball. They don't also have to do a podcast hit like after the the game and so they're very like ready to go and I think the Warriors are just upset you lose and you get mad that's what happens you get upset about it and I think they got upset about it on NBA TV after the game we had a uh, Celtics legend 1981 NBA Finals MVP Cedric Maxwell discussing Draymond Green uh, I see Draymond behind me okay. but, but don't act like it wouldn't been in the 80s he would have been knocked out <laughs> hey, come oh, on Seth, stop that Seth. hey hey I, I watch y'all team and played against y'all team, and I, I'm going to tell you, like on the real, they had about five, six guys on y'all team that would knock you out, and you was one of them. I see you over there. I, I, I'm sorry I watched you moving over there. We would have knocked you out in my day. We would have given you that old one, two, what four. And then you would have fallen down, sir, and you, you would have been finished. Guys, I get it. It was a great era of basketball, but, like, nobody wants to hear this shit. 
that's not what's going on anymore. Like, I don't know who this is for, but like, we've heard it. Believe me, we heard it. It was tougher back then. You guys were tough. We've seen the clips. We've heard everybody talk about it. Enough. What's happening now? Can we talk about what's going on now and what's going on with the game today in, in 2022? Or you want to take us back to 1982? I don't even know what was going on. Like, when you enough. guys didn't Stop lift it. weights and smoke cigarettes at halftime. <laughs> but, but they were tougher. It's fine. Good. But let's find a different topic to talk about because at this point we everyone has heard this shit stop you guys sound so washed talking about this <laughs> welcome to nba podcast trivia there's so many nba podcasts out there today in the nba podcast realm the podcast ecosystem the most recent entry in the podcast space just might be lebron james who tweeted on sunday jumping on someone's podcast soon maybe my own We've got four contestants coming up here today, and we're going to test their NBA podcast knowledge. Joining us today, he's a TV writer on Bob's Burgers and a co-host of the AirPods podcast. He's Michael Benner. Michael, how are you? I'm fantastic. How are you, Jason? I'm doing well. He is a TV writer on Blackish and a co-host of the History of Heat presented by StockX. He is Isaiah Lester. Isaiah, how are you? I'm good. StockX isn't great, though. They're being sued. She is a stand-up comic. She's a writer. She's the co-host of the excellent podcast with Pie Guys. She is Julia Claire. Julia, how are Hi, you? Hi, I'm good. I'm also suing StockX for unrelated reasons. And finally, <laughs> he's a stand-up. Uh, you've seen him on The Late Late Show. You've seen him on Seth Meyers. You've seen him on Crashing on HBO. He's got a special coming out sometime in the future, vaguely on a, on a platform to be named at a future date. He is Kenny DeForest. Kenny, how are you? Hey, I'm great, man. Thank you for having me. Good to be here. First question, which of these is a real NBA podcast? Is it A, CDs with Sam Cassell and Bruce Bruce? B, Mama There Goes That Pod with Mark Jackson and Keenan Ivory Wayans? C, Road Trippin' with Richard Jefferson and Channing Fry? D, Missing Credits with J.R. Smith and Kai Rizdahl? Folks, everybody here got the answer right. It is C, Road Trippin' with Richard Jefferson and Channing Fry. Folks, that's it for NBA Podcast Trivia! Goodbye. Underdog Fantasy's Pick'em Game is the easiest and most fun way to spice up your NBA season. Just pick over or under on your favorite or least favorite player stats, and you can win up to 20 times your money in a single night. We have Game 4 on Friday. How many points, rebounds, assists, steals, and curses in front of the children will Draymond Green accumulate? Underdog keeps it super simple with their easy-to-use website and mobile app. Pick between two and five players. You can take home some cold hard cash, use code all caps, and get your first deposit. Double by underdog, sign up and play today. <laughs> Let's go to the scroll. The Suns had COVID. Could the reason for the Suns' epic Game 7 collapse, the best regular season team in the NBA this past season, could the reason for their gone-missing moment or their unbelievable beatdown at the hands of Luka Doncic and the Mavs, could it be the whole Suns squad had Rona? Here's an article from Sam Amick and Joe Varden, the headline of which is, Suns' COVID-19 outbreak in playoffs raises question about NBA protocol. The Phoenix Suns were managing a COVID-19 outbreak as their season fell apart, multiple sources is totally athletic with six individuals including one player testing positive either late in the western conference semifinals or the day of game seven <laughs> late is a long like that's a big window late in the western so like game six or game seven like what, are, what is late with their season on the line the suns were destroyed at home by the dallas mavericks 12390 on may 15th one phoenix assistant coach brian gates tested positive after game six and missed the final game while at least some of the other their sons indicated to colleagues they weren't feeling well prior to game seven. Now, this is very, very shady shit from Sam Amick and Joe Barton. While some of the other sons, so we're talking about an assistant coach, Brian Gates here, and then you say some of the other sons. Are we calling coaches sons or is other sons players? I think Sam and Joe understand very well how to write clearly, and I think they're being very, very shady with their descriptions here because they don't want to say, in my opinion, that multiple multiple sons tested positive for COVID or were not feeling well on the day of game seven. The player tested positive the day after game seven. The athletic does not identify individuals who tested positive for COVID-19 unless their names are made public by the team, league, 
neither are the individuals themselves. The others who tested positive were support staffers and Chris Paul. <laughs> no, I, we don't know that. First of all, this is not a surprise, right? We're singling out the Suns here because they had a very notable and historic fucking collapse at the absolute pinnacle of their season. But I firmly believe that if Giannis had tested positive in 2021, in the middle of the finals, no one would have said anything. The books would not have told anyone. I firmly believe that if LeBron James tested positive in the bubble or if Anthony Davis tested positive in the bubble, nothing would have happened. I firmly believe that right now, if Jason Tatum catches Rona, there will be not a fucking word said to anyone and that the league wants it like that. Whatever their rules are, I am absolutely sure that everybody understands without needing to be told that, hey, as long as they ain't dying, Let's get him out. Let's make sure we get out there. <laughs> Miles Bridges in the news. Miles Bridges, you might remember, turned down a $60 million extension at the behest of his agent, Rich Paul, last summer. Rich Paul, he was like, hey, Charlotte's giving me $60 million. I think I might do this. And Rich Paul was like, don't do it. No, don't. You're up for a max if you wait. You wait until next season. And how does Miles celebrate by Instagram storying a cup of lean and a pre-roll? <laughs> <laughs> Miles would later tweet pink lemonade, stating that the in inside of the cup is pink lemonade. And I, I don't know about you, but I always love to post on social media just generic drinks that I'm having. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a cup of iced tea. Why? I don't know. Because it's almost midnight in the middle of the summer while I'm clutching a joint. I just wanted to show you my Arnold Palmer. Y'all ain't ever double cup the lemonade? Like, that's obviously <laughs> a He clearly meant to put this on his Finsta or send this to his close friends list on Instagram stories stories or send this as a DM slash text, right? This cup of lean was not meant for public consumption, right? No, there's no way this was for public. I think like, I think his friends got it and they were like, hey dog, um, everybody's seeing this right now. And I think he didn't want to get too scared so he could, somebody told him the lemonade thing and he thought it would work. And that's what the crazy part actually is. He took is it down, right? Like thing. he took it down. He let it stay for way too long, though. <laughs> yeah, well, that le the lean and the, the lean and the joint were kicking at that point, so it's like <laughs> yeah. he was adhering too much. Wait, how do we even know that's his hand? I mean, it could be someone else's. <laughs> it could just be a random, you know, person drinking lean, smoking a J. We don't know that. <laughs> fucking not fucking him. better call Saul, fucking <laughs> Zuri over here. Yeah, we don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. So, as we all know, J.J. Redick has a hit podcast. He had been on the payroll of ESPN for a number of years as a talking head, and all of a sudden the geniuses over at ESPN were like, hey, this guy's really popular. We have him under contract. Why aren't we putting him on shit? So now J.J. has been coming on First Take, The Get Up with Greeny, and all of a sudden C.J. McCollum, noted podcaster, noted star of the New Orleans Pelicans, has joined him recently this week, and the two of them just ran a fucking two-on-one fast break on Stephen A. Smith, who looks absolutely sick. So here is Stephen A. referencing Darvin Ham's introduction to Prefs Conference, and in particular, the fact that Russell Westbrook, the starting point guard for the team last season, showed up at the press conference. Talk to the teams around the league, and they'll tell you the trepidation that exists about around Russell Westbrook. What does that have to do with him going to the introductory press conference of his team's new coach when he is on the team and lives in the city? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and like Ben told that he's going to be part of the team right. going forward. Should add that CJ and JJ never played together, but this this clip shows that they could have been a very effective backcourt, I think. <laughs> you explained a bunch of things about Russell Westbrook that had nothing to do with that take, and so I want clarification on this. Sure. What is your issue with Russell Westbrook being at that news conference? That's a wild thing. Not, that, That's a wild that thing for you to say. <laughs> him supporting his team. Look how defeated Stephen A is. It's 24 seconds in the clip. He's like, he looks like in the first 48 when the suspect is about to like basically admit that they did it. <laughs> <laughs> him supporting his team, his organization, yeah. his coach, a fellow African-American man. A fellow African-American. CJ hit him with a fellow African-American man. I mean, here's Stephen A reacting to that, which is, again, I kind to say a pretty solid point. Don't go there. That's and not now, what, that's not you're what I'm saying, going, This is what you said. See, but no, no, but see, you you're crossing, said that you're crossing he, the line when you bring up oh, another African American man. That's not where I'm going with you that. I'm said talking that, about the Lakers organization discussing trading him. What does that got to do with him? Well, what I'm saying, no, what are you talking about with that guy? You said him going to the press conference, you're disappointed. I'm saying, I'm no, I'm saying don't, that, run the tape. We got <laughs> run the tape. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I believe the children are our future. Teach them well. Don't curse at the basketball games. Don't let them hear that coarse language inside the TD Bank North Arena. <laughs> Give them a sense of pride to make it easier. Let the children's laughter remind us who we are. I had it long ago. Okay, 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 not okay. to cook <laughs> in front of the children. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, we gotta pay for this now. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, half of our episodes are copyright wow. in France. So, okay.